So today what we're gonna build is this Minecraft torch for my son. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out I was gonna run a cord, so I made some mistakes. What you'll find out about me is I don't really have a lot of plans, I just kinda wing it. So as you can tell, the shop isn't uh, exactly clean. It's a working shop, but hey, that's how they should be. Sawdust and slitters. So what I got here is a candle, battery powered candle light up I don't know if you can see that but it lights and this goes on there and the whole unit will stick on the wall so that's what we're going to build today so let's get started I started by cutting a piece of oak walnut and maple into one and one eighth inch squares the great part about this project is if you're like me you have a lot of cutoffs and scrap pieces so this gives you a good opportunity to use some of those now you could use any dimension you wanted on these, but I was using approximately one inch because those were the pieces that I had available. After they were cut to size, it's time for the glue up. I laid them out in a somewhat random order, making sure not to have any two of the same type of wood side by side. While waiting for the glue to dry, I started building the form for the torch head. I'm using melamine, and the form I'm creating will make eight one and one eighth inch cubes. I'm using hot glue to start assembling the form. Be sure when you're done to seal all the edges to make sure you don't have any leakage from the epoxy. Then I applied box tape to the back side of the melamine spacers to make sure the epoxy doesn't bond to the wood. Then I applied mold release to the mold. I made sure to apply two coats and let it dry between coats. With the mold release dried in the form, it's time to start mixing the epoxy. I'm using yellow dye, orange dye, and red dye. Be sure to follow the mixing directions on the epoxy you're using. I'm using Alumilite and it mixes 50-50, one part resin to one part hardener. Be sure to mix it thoroughly until the opaque color is gone. The resin should be completely clear when thoroughly mixed. After the epoxy was dyed, I started pouring it into the mold. I mix some clear epoxy into the tinted colors to make different shades of yellow, orange, and red. Then I poured the last few cubes with just clear epoxy. The glue was dry on the lamp base, so I cleaned off the excess glue and gave it a light sanding. Then I cut the torch base into one inch long segments. I did this on the cross cut sled, but you could do this on a miter saw as well.
Then I drilled a one inch hole in the center of each block. Originally I intended to have a corded light inside the torch, but later changed my mind. And as usual, something goes wrong in woodworking. Here, the Forstner bit grabbed the piece and tore the center out a little bit. Luckily I cut enough extra blanks and it didn't matter, I just set this one aside. Then I lined the 1 inch blocks up in a random order and started the glue up. A few hours later the glue was set on the torch base and it was also time to remove the epoxy cubes from the form. The mold release I applied did its job and the form came apart easily. I then made another mold to take the eight one inch blocks and then turn them into a two by two cube. This mold was small enough to fit in the pressure pot, so I left it in there overnight to make sure to reduce any air bubbles. Then I cleaned up the torch base on the jointer, and then a little more on the sander. I drilled two small dowel holes through one block and into the torch head. This is to make the torch head removable to give access to the torch light bulb and battery. Then I cut the torch head base at 55 degrees. There was no rhyme or reason to this, it just seemed like a good angle. The torch head was cured and it was time to demold it. Then I found out the hard way, the mistake I had made. I only used one coat of mold release on the form and I didn't wait for it to dry. The form did not come apart easily. Eventually I gave up and trimmed the rest off with a table saw. Waiting a little longer and putting another coat on and letting the mold release dry would have saved me a lot of trouble. I didn't get it on camera but I also trimmed the torch head to size on the table saw. Now for every woodworker's least favorite task, sanding, sanding, and then some more sanding.
With that done, I was able to use some 5 minute epoxy and take the torch head and bond it to the top of the torch base. For the light source and the torch head, I finally decided on these LED candles I bought off Amazon. I believe they were $12 or $14 for the set. It came with a remote, and my favorite part is it had a flicker function that would make the torch head seem more realistic. The candle had fake plastic wax droplets running down the side that I sanded off so it would fit in the hole. Then I drilled out the torch head so that the candle would fit inside. After marking the depth, I used some more 5 minute epoxy to set the candle into the torch base. Then I decided to make a mounting plate for the torch base. I also decided the torch was just a little too tall so I cut a few inches off at 55 degrees. That's the piece seen here. In this clip from earlier in the video, you can see a cutoff piece that's going to work perfect for the trim on the base plate. Then I used some polishing compound on a buffing wheel to buff out the torch head. You don't want to completely buff it out, you want the finished product to be somewhat opaque. I mounted the base plate on the torch base and the project is almost done. Then I used a slot cutting router bit to cut two small notches in the back side of the base plate. Then it's time for some finish and then the final reveal.
earlier in the video, I used way too much epoxy when I was mixing, didn't measure well at all. So what I did was I took this plastic cup, I made a pine blank that was relatively round before the epoxy set up, put some five minute epoxy on the bottom, glued the pine blank in the cup so it wouldn't float to the top, made a little more epoxy, tinted it, and poured it in this cup. It's been several days now and that's cured. So what we'll do is we'll put this on the lathe in the next video and turn it into an egg. If you're trying to produce a video, make sure you got stuff set up first. Nobody wants to watch you spend about a minute frustratingly trying to get tape off a spool.